Go ahead. Tap it. Good evening. My name is Pam Turner, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to a series of lectures presented by Yashua the Rock, entitled, What is the True Meaning of Eschatology? This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The executive director of Yahshua the Rock is Dr. John Quates. The president is Dr. Gabrielle Mays. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah, impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. 
after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this pool, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. For this evening's class, our scripture lesson will be Isaiah, the 13th chapter that will be read by our scripture reader, Lisa Austin. We'll have class dedicated in prayer by Harold Wade, Jr., and our scripture readers this session will be Karen Gagno and Graciela Underwood. I'd like to say good evening to the class. Our scripture lesson will be Isaiah the 13th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible. 
containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yashua Promotions. Isaiah, the 13th chapter. The doom of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, foresaw. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto, unto them. Wave the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, the likeness of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the empire nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahweh of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one in his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children shall also be dashed into pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meds against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellence, shall be as when Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their foes there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. Their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, her day shall not be prolonged. That was Isaiah, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Next, we'll have some announcements by Bishay Gordon.
And then we'll also have welcoming remarks by John Quates. Good evening, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here. Now, announcement, please pick up your packet. Oh, Father. <laughs> Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> you want to fold it or do it by code as well? <laughs> yeah, do it by code. Oops. Want a tie? Thank you. Okay, I gotta go stand in the middle. <laughs> if everybody does gotta stand, I gotta stand. There's two little dots right here anyway. All right, so thank you for coming. <laughs> and we are so happy that you're here. And this is a very, very important topic. I'm not gonna be up here long. This is a very important topic, and I do understand that we have visitors and new people and returning guests. Please keep this in mind that it's absolutely necessary that this topic is covered for the new people as well. It affects everybody. There's nobody that's going to escape what we're talking about right now. And the word really means the end of things. And if we truly love the new and old, the lambs and the sheep and the goats, we would preach, it would be preached to everybody. You understand what I'm saying? I know you got to go how you lay it. Somehow, I'm hoping that you're able to tie the topic with a basic foundation. It can be done. All right? Do not think that it can't be done. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, but I'm held accountable as well. So I can be jumped on as well as I'm not jumping on you guys. But please just try to do it. And again, we're we just so happy that you're here. And we will, our hope and desire is to do it again next year. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of people doing things. I hope that you enjoy yourself and that things are, this is not the best hotel. I understand that. But that you are at least getting something from this. That's what's important, not the, the outside of it. But it's what's inside, all right? You understand? I'm, talking for the hotel and as a vessel as well. All right, and one last thing. I want to thank everybody for their participation in helping us. It was a lot of help. We couldn't do this on our own, not just you sitting there, but a lot of people 
I was asked not to name names, so I won't name names. But the people who donated uh, both gifts as well as their time. Uh, so I can't acknowledge you by name, but I can say this. Let's clap for those people. All right. That's it. Speakers, if you are called to be a speaker, you are giving your consent to be videoed for both cable TV and the internet. If you don't want to be videoed, please decline the floor when you are called. Speakers, please be obedient to the bell so everyone has equal floor time. This will be a three speaker format. Each speaker will have approximately 40 to 43 minutes. I would also like to announce we have a first time visitor, Cliff Brother, welcome. And for our first speaker, I would like to call Carla Carter from Meridian, Mississippi. Good evening. Can y'all hear me? Okay, y'all can hear me. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. I have a lot of clients that hate everybody here right now. <laughs> I'm an accountant, and um, of course the deadline is Monday, and so my phone has been blowing up since I've been here, but I didn't want to miss it at all. Um, so we decided last year that we would be here, and I made sure I blocked my schedule off last year to be here this year. Um, and so I do want to thank Yahweh for moving um, Chicago Northside to have this event and everybody who was willing to come. I'm thankful for everybody, but I do want to hurry up and jump into the topic, though. I'm going to put my phone right here because I cannot remember scriptures, and so I'll grab it in a minute. But um, can I erase? Can I use the board? Okay. Um, real quick, if I can get the reader to get the definition of eschatology in the textbook one more time. Okay. So it's the doctrine concerning death, judgment, and immortality, right? I M M. Mortality. You know, when you get to the board, you can't spell anything. All right. So and I know we do have new people here. I'll keep that in mind, but I'm going to try to pick up everybody at the same time with the 40 minutes that I have. So if we can get Isaiah 46, 9, and 10. Um, the reason why I think that this topic is so important and right on time, not because we're at the end of the thing, but we are, but we have a responsibility to be good watchmen and warn the people that the sword is coming. The sword is here. And if you did not know, and hopefully I can prove it, we're in the day of judgment right now. But we'll touch it. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, please. Mm -hmm. Remember the former things of old, mm -hmm. for I am Yahweh, and there is no other. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, and there is no like me, mm -hmm. declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that were not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. 
All right, so this is Yahweh prophesying through the prophet Isaiah saying, remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh. That wasn't Isaiah saying that Isaiah is Yahweh. That was Yahweh speaking through a vessel saying that I am Yahweh. Yahweh speaks, he's been speaking through vessels the whole time we've been here telling you the things that he wants to tell you. And like the previous speaker said before, everybody got to eat. It may not be what I want to eat, but everybody got to eat, right? And so I am Yahweh, read it, keep reading. Uh -huh. There is none else. There is no Yahweh and God and Jehovah and look, there's only one true Elohim. And you have to call him by his name. Read. There is none like him. So when you tell somebody new or old that the creator's name is Yahweh and they tell you, well, yeah, we're talking about the same one, God. No, there's none like him. Read. I'm, I'm getting crunk already. God, dog. <laughs> Read. I'm sorry. Read. Sorry. Declaring sorry. The end from the Yahweh declared the end from the very beginning. I know the book of Revelations can be hard to a whole bunch of people because it's, it's, just, it's, it's hard if you don't understand it. But if you don't understand it, all you got to do is go to the beginning. Moses, he, he's not the author, but he did write the first five books of the Bible. Yahweh authored it, but he, Yahshua authored it. He's the author of our, right? Okay. Moses wrote the first five books. John wrote the last five books. If you look up on this chart here, you see Moses up here. He's having a vision of the entire thing from start to finish. It, he didn't stop. He saw the whole thing from start to finish, but the reason he had to come down and put the veil over his face after the last trip is so that the children of Israel could look to the end of what he had seen because it wasn't time yet. We're going to hit the not time yet in a minute. Now, on this side, you see John seeing the creation or the whole thing from the end to the beginning, right? And so we're going to pick up Moses and we're going to pick up John. He declared the end from the beginning. And there are so many different ways that it could be hit. I'm not going to hit it this way, but give you an example. If the end was declared from the beginning, right? And Yahshua said, beginning at Moses. And where did Yahshua end? He ended at Moses. He was the end of the law. Moses was the beginning of the law. Yahshua ended the law. It's so many ways you can hit it, but we're going to hit it a different way right now. So Yahweh declared the end from the beginning, right? And of course, eschatology is about death, judgment, and immortality. We're going to pick up Adam for just a quick second. Now, when Adam partook of the transgression or touched the tree that Yahweh told him not to touch, what happened? Death, right? And then what happened? Yahweh said, because you did this, then you had judgment. But that was the beginning. The end is death, judgment, and immortality, right? And so what had to happen? Because it wasn't time for immortality yet. Michael had to kick him out so he won't touch the tree of life and live forever because it's not time yet for immortality. Death, judgment, immortality. You're going to see it all through the book. But let me calm down for just a second. And so when eschatology or the end of all things is coming, we have to understand how Yahweh did it. And for the new people, let me, let's do this real quick. Go to Acts, the 17th chapter. Go up to maybe the 16th verse. We're going to come down. We can't read all of it because it takes time. But we're going to come down. Pick up where Peter was in Mars Hill. And he saw them wholly given over to idolatry. Do you know that idolatry is the worship of an idol, and an idol is anything that you give glory to besides Yahweh the Creator? Do you know that you can actually commit idolatry and still call on the name of Yahweh? If you have a concept about Yahweh that is truly not the way Yahweh is set to do it, that's still idolatry. Do you know that if you are worshiping Yahweh in any way besides spirit and truth, that that is still idolatry? This is not just for the new people. I'm picking up everybody today. Read, please. Thank you. All right. He saw the whole city. We see the whole world given to idolatry, so his spirit was stirred up in him. Our spirit gets stirred up too. Stirred up right now. <laughs> Read. <laughs> he had a responsibility. He had to dispute with them. 
in the synagogue with the Jews, not the Gentiles, the ones that knew Yahweh, that had his name. He was disputing with them, read. And with the devout persons. And with the devout persons, too. So it, go ahead. I ain't got time. Go ahead. Mm. And in the market daily, that's why I got that one. Mm-hmm. What would this babbler say? Some of y'all might think I'm babbling. What would this babbler say? Read. Because he preached the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. I'm not going to tell you how good it is and not give it to you. We're going to preach the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. He preached to them the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And they said, that's a strange. We ain't never heard that before. And some of you new people never heard it either. Read. Uh-huh. And, the resurrection. and the resurrection, read. And they took him and brought him unto Elevator, mm -hmm. saying, Then you know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. Mm -hmm. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Mm -hmm. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or Ro to hear some new thing. Ro skip down to the 24th verse, please. 24th verse. Mm -hmm. Yahweh. They so, made the world. So now he's declaring unto them this strange deity that they have no clue. Because they had all kind of different gods they were worshiping. All kind of different stone idols and things like that. And all of those gods had names. I said all the gods have names. Clearly God's not a name. Ding, 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 ding. All the gods had names. But there was one inscription that said to the unknown God. Just in case we miss somebody, we're going to worship the unknown God. Well, let me let you know who this unknown God is. He said what? Yahweh. Yahweh. That made the world. That's what we're doing today, letting you know who this unknown God is that you've been looking for all your life, and I know you've been hungry going to these churches. That's why you're here today. Read. I ain't got time. Go ahead. And all things therein. Yahweh who made the world. It's only one who made the world. It wasn't a whole bunch of them. Just because it said let us, I'm going to explain let us in a minute. It was just one who made the world, and his name is Yahweh, who made the world and everything in it. Seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth. He rules heaven and earth. Read. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He doesn't dwell in the church of God in Christ. He don't dwell in idea. He don't dwell in temples made with hands. Read. Neither is worshipped with men's hands. He's not worshipped with men's hands either. As though he needed anything. He don't, you don't got to give him no money. He don't need anything. Read. Seeing he giveth to all life. And he breath. gives to all life, breath, and everything else that you have. So yeah. when you're covenant, what you're doing is saying that y'all wouldn't give me enough. But we ain't got time to read. Go ahead. Mm -mm. And breath and all things. All things read. And hath made of one blood. Yahweh has made of one man. All, all nations. nations of men to dwell on where? On all the, the face, face of, of the, the earth. earth. So when the scientists say that there's life on Mars, you can say, no, X said it's, he gave it. Uh, we supposed to be dwelling on earth. You can use the Bible and you can tear our scientists up with the, read, go ahead, I ain't got time. I'm so, and have so determined the times before mm -hmm. appointed mm -hmm. and the and, bounds of their habitation. And he determined beforehand the times before appointed and the bounds of your habitation. He's the reason why you're here right now. He determined it way before then. That all of, just that by itself should make you be like, oh, thank you, Yahweh, for choosing me, read. 27th verse, mm -hmm. that they should seek Yahweh. That they should seek him. Seek Yahweh. If happily they might feel after him. If happily you might feel after him and find him. The first aim of the school is what? To help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. I'm going to pause right here. This is plug for me. So our event, June 20th, <laughs> in case I forget, real quick, that's actually the topic for our event is the first aim of the school. It's June 20th through the 23rd. Before I forget, dot org. You can go to the website and register for free. Go ahead. Happily, they might feel after him and, and find, find him, him, though he be not far though from every one of us. Though he be not far from every one of us. Why we be looking all the way up there? How far is all the way up past the sun? When it rains, that's God whipping his wife. She's crying. What? <laughs> How far is that? He's not far from every one of you so much so he's right there in you. You are made up of spirit, soul, and body. Yahweh is spirit, so says John 4, 24. Yahweh is spirit. 
They that worship him must worship him in spirit. Did anybody say water? Anybody say give you money? You must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if he is spirit, then and you are made of spirit, soul, and body, then what does that mean then? He's been right there. In the, what you've been looking for all your life has been right there with you the whole time. We want to wake you up to it today. Read. For in him we live we and live, move. We live, move, and have our being. 28th verse. Where you at? For in him we live and move and have our being, uh -huh. as certain also of your own poets have said, uh -huh. for we are also his offspring. Uh -huh. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, uh -huh. we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, uh -huh. graven by art and man's device. Uh -huh. And the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at. At the time of that ignorance, Yahweh winked at it. This is my, I'm going to say this right quick. But and now. I, wait a minute, I do get it. Now, I know what was said yesterday, and that is true. It's impossible to be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. But new people don't fret for your loved ones that have passed away, and you know they didn't know nothing about Yahweh at the time. Yahweh is a just Elohim. There is a lecture where Dr. Kenley himself said, this is the last night you're going to be saved under Jesus. What does he mean by that? Because Yahweh knows whether you knew or not, there is a sin that's not unto death. What is that sin? It's ignorance. But it's Yahweh's responsibility to make it known unto you. And once you know and you do it anyway, that's the judgment. That's the day we're in right now, because she's going to read it right now. Go ahead and read, sugar. Go ahead. But now commandeth all men But everywhere. right now, Yahweh command every man, woman, child, everywhere to repent. repent. That means to change. Why is that? Read. Because he hath appointed a day. Because Yahweh had a, has appointed a day, and we in that day right now. What is he going to do in that day? In the which he will judge the world. Yahweh's judging the entire world in righteousness. By how? By that man. By that man. Whom he hath ordained. Whom Yahweh ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto Yahweh all men. Yahweh has given proof to all men that he raised Yahshua the Messiah from the dead. That is Yahweh judging the entire world in righteousness. What does that mean though? Genesis 15 chapter. Let's find out what righteousness means to Yahweh. I ain't got time. Don't read it. Genesis 15 chapter is where Yahweh came to Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram said, Yahweh, what would you give me saying I go child? I only have a child. And the steward of my house, this Eleazar of Damascus, is going to be my heir. What did Yahweh say? Oh, this shall not be thine heir. There shall come forth one out of thy own bowels. He shall be thine heir. And know for sure that I'm going to multiply that seed as the sands of the sea, stars of heaven, and know for sure that they shall go down into a land that is not theirs and be placed in bondage for a period of time after which I, Yahweh, will bring them out. The nation that shall keep them in bondage, what is Yahweh going to do to that nation? Judgment. judgment. He's going to judge them, but it ain't the end yet. So we ain't going to see no immortality, but you're going to see some death and judgment, right? I'm going to judge that nation, right? That's what he told Abram. And it said, Abram believed Yahweh, and that is what was accounted unto him for righteousness. So what does that mean to me right now then? Yahweh has appointed a day in the which he's going to judge the world in righteousness, meaning that if you believe, you're saved, and if you do not, you're condemned already. John 3.16, new people, you know this one too. Quote it with me. John 3.16, everybody say it together when she read. <laughs> Yahweh so loved the world, what did he do? He What? Whosoever shall believe on him should have everlasting life. Read the next verse. I know y'all don't know that part. <laughs> Let her read it. For Yahweh know. sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why did he not send his son to condemn the world? Because the world was already condemned. Why is that? They didn't know who the son was. I'm going to get Orlando, Florida in the house in a minute. Next read get uh, uh, John 17th chapter for me. Keep reading where you are, all right, quick. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through him might be saved. But he sent his son to save them from the condemnation. I, even me, I was thinking that the salvation meant that once I received the Holy Spirit, he's just going to save me from sinning and I'm not going to sin no, no more. No, he came and got me from the damnation that I was already set forth to receive because I hadn't, I hadn't known Yahshua. That's what he was saving us from. That's not my point, though. Go ahead and read. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on the Son 
is not condemned. Do you know what condemned means? It means you are sentenced to death. What do you do with a condemned house? You destroy it. Condemnation means that you are going to be destroyed. That's what he's saving you from, is from destroying those that don't believe on his son. Read it. But he that believeth not is condemned already. But he that believeth not, remember, believe in his righteousness, not believe in his unrighteousness. He's judging the whole world and right. If you believe not, you're condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. What? That's why you're condemned already, because you haven't believed on the name of his son. And it's not Jesus. It's not. I'm going to tell you why it's not. Real quick, new people. There's no letter J in the Hebrew language to this day. And he definitely was born uh, attached to the Hebrew tribe, right? Also, do you know that Jesus, if you look up suffixes and prefixes, the J-E means earth, just like Hova means ruin, and Jehovah is ruin on earth. Do you know that S-U-S, sus, means pig, earth pig? You think he's going to name his son earth pig? <laughs> what? Absolutely not. I wish I had time to get those names. Read. Go ahead and read. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness. We're not talking about sunlight. We're talking about understanding, illumination. This is the condemnation because after Yahweh raised Yahshua from the dead and poured out the Holy Spirit, light has entered into the world. But men love darkness rather than light. You, you rather say, oh, I'm, I'm keeping my sweet Jesus. Jesus has done a lot for me. I ain't done one thing. Yahweh winked at that ignorance, and Yahweh was the one that has been doing everything for you all of your life. But when you know better, you do better. Read. No, because their the, deeds were evil. Their deeds were evil. Go ahead and read 17 and 1. John 17 and 1. John 17 and 1. Mm -hmm. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Now, Yahshua is in the Garden of Gethsemane saying a prayer. This whole reason why he's in the Garden, goodness. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said what? Father, the hour is come. Mm -hmm. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. The hour is come. Glorify thy son, so thy son can also glorify thee. What does that mean? That was the whole purpose anyway. It was for Yahweh to be glorified. But Yahweh has to glorify the son first. You have to recognize Yahweh as a son first before you can recognize him as a father. Glorify thy son, so thy son can also glorify thee. Read. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, mm -hmm. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he should give eternal life to everybody. So that he should give eternal life to as many as Yahweh had given him. When did he give them to him? There is an elect. He gave them to him. And I'm going to pick it up in the book of life. We're going to touch it in just a second. As a matter of fact, get Exodus 24 and 1 uh, next reader. But keep reading where you are. Three. And this is life eternal, mm -hmm. that they might know thee. Now, this is what eternal life is. Now, she's reading out the King James Version of the Bible. Now, I want you to pay attention to the real, how slick it is. Now, there's a lot of mistranslations and misinterpolations in this Bible. Now, she's reading out the King. She didn't tell me she was reading out the King James Version, but I know she is because of what she just said. So that, let's read it again. And this is life eternal. So, that they might know thee. That they might know thee. Next reader, can you read it out of holy name for me? This is life eternal, that they might know thee is what she said. In, in the holy name it says, so that they, thou may know that. There's a difference between knowing thee and knowing that. Knowing thee, the only true El, and Yahshua makes it seem like it's two separate entities that you have to know. And that's not eternal life, it's to know thee, Yahweh is the true Elohim, and Yahshua. But it's eternal life to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua. You have to know he's the same one. But that's not my whole point. So eternal life is to know that Yahweh, that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and the Savior, Yahshua, whom he sent. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. I want you to read Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. I want you to keep where you are in Exodus 24 chapter. And turning to his disciples, he said, You can read somewhere. Matthew. Mm -hmm. Matthew. Matthew 11 and 27. 27. Mm -hmm. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. 
And no man knows the Son but Why, the Father. Pay attention to the words. No man knows the Son except the Father. But eternal life is to know now. No man knows the Son except the Father and... But the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and? And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Who was the he? I thought no man, no man does know. But his sheep hear his voice. You are his offspring, the spirit part of you, the witness that's in you knows the Father. And so if no man knows the Son but the Father, and no man knows the Father but the Son, and the Son has to reveal the Father, we're in a pickle. If eternal life is to know that Yahweh is the only true El and Yahshua, how are we supposed to know? It's upon Yahweh's shoulders to do it. And what he did, he declared the end from the beginning. So when he went all the way back to the beginning with Moses, he was responsible. And so he went back to Moses to show Moses exactly what it was because it was time to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's a type and a shadow. Exodus 24, chapter first verse, because I don't have time to pick up everything else. Exodus 24, 1. 24 and 1. And he said unto Moses, come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Mm -hmm and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. Right, read. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Mm -hmm. And Moses came and told the people all the words of so Yahweh. So Moses was to come up alone and by himself up top Mount Sinai, right? Ninth verse. Ninth verse. Uh -huh. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. So they were here. Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the element of Israel, right? And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there Drop was under down. his feet. That's right. Drop down to where Moses had to go up alone and by himself, right before the 16th verse. Okay. And Moses, whoops. And Moses, went, and Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. Where are you reading at? I'm reading at the 13th verse. 13th verse. Okay. Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. Read. And Moses went up into the Mount of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come ag again unto you. Mm -hmm. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Mm -hmm. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. Right. And mm -hmm. Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. Mm -hmm. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the cloud covered it six days. So Moses went up in the top of Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. It doesn't tell you anything happened in those six days after that. Read the next verse, please. 17. Mm-hmm. And the sight of the glory of Yahweh was like devouring fire on the top of the mount. In the so when eyes. Moses, I'm so sorry. So when Moses went up into the top of this mount, and it said the sight for the children of Israel they saw was a cloud, a pillar of fire. Why is that important? So when this cloud came out here, what happened? It was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, right? So that means when he went up, it was evening time. And so the first thing Moses saw, it was evening time. That's why you have evening and the morning were the first day because he saw it in the evening time but how do we know what Moses saw you go to Genesis the first chapter and so when you go to Genesis the first chapter pick up those six days that the cloud covered it six days and it said that he was up there for 40 days what all did Moses see in those 40 days class he saw the six days of creation seventh day he rested Yahweh gave him all the instructions of the tabernacle those 33 days what else did he see class he saw he did he saw the book of life 34th chapter, when Moses came down, find it where he um, said, block me out, I pray thee, out of thy book of life. We're talking about the judgment, eschatology, but I got to pick up some things. Exodus 33 and... 34. 32? 32, 32, is it 32 and 34. 34 when he came down, right? 32 starting at 32. Is it 32? When he said, block me out, I pray thee, out of thy book of life. I may be Yet saying, now... May, 34 probably is where he went back up. 32. Exodus 32, 32. Yep. Okay. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me. They sinned. What is the wages of sin, class? Yeah. Death. The meaning of eschatology is the doctrine of death, judgment, and immortality. So they, there's death there. It's not the end yet. And so he said, blot me out, I pray thee, out of thy book of life. And what did Yahweh say? Keep reading. And if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. How did Moses know to say, blot me out of the book? Because he saw the book of life. He saw his own name in the book of life, but then he also saw Yahweh blot those names out that sinned against him. 
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 33. Is it Hebrews? No, not Hebrews. God dog it. Is it Philippians? Philippians 4 and 3? God dog. Try Philippians 4 and 3. I know it when I hear it. I know it when I hear it. <laughs> Can't even tell you what to say. I think it's Philippians 4 and 3, though. And then Revelations 22nd chapter. Before we get Revelations, though. Philippians. Philippians 4 and 3, try that. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women. Yep, I think that's which it. Which labored with me in the gospel. Pop, go up to the first verse, please. I don't want to waste nobody's time. Philippians 4 yep. and 1. 4 and 1. Go. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, mm -hmm. my joy and crown, so stand fast in Yahshua, my dearly beloved. Mm -hmm. I beseech Eodolius and beseech them names just, just yeah, call Sinches, it. that they be of the same mind in Yahshua. And I treat thee also, true yoke fellow, mm -hmm. help those women which laboreth with me in the gospel. With so he's Clement telling also. them, he's telling them like how to behave. You know what I mean? Like treat those women like this, do this, do that, you know, have the same mind as Joshua, so forth and so on. Keep reading. And with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. My fellow laborers whose name is in the book of life. Every creature. Before he stepped into shape and form, Yahweh already knew who he was going to save. Before either child was born, good or bad, Jacob have I love, Esau have I hated, right? Psalms 139, and pick it up where um, all my members were formed when I was unperfect. Yet there was none of them. 139 and something. Mm. Dang, I, there's so much to cover. How much time I got? Psalms 139. 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Marvelous are thy works, Yahweh. And that my soul knoweth right my well. My soul knoweth right well. Read. My substance was not hid from thee. My substance. Ah, don't have time. Intelligence is the source from which all things come from. You cannot have knowledge without having intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to comprehend or the ability to acquire knowledge. There is, it's utterly impossible to have knowledge, wisdom, or any other attribute without first having intelligence. That is the source or the masculine part of Yahweh, right? The substance is the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. Faith is the substance. All of, that's the substance or the feminine portion of Yahweh, right? And so when you look at, God, dog, it is so much to cover. You said, I got how much time? You said 20, 30 minutes? Okay, all right, I got 30 No, I'm just playing. Um, so when you go to Proverbs, when you go to Proverbs, the eighth chapter, it says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? Because that's the substance of Yahweh or the feminine portion of Yahweh, right? And so you have source and substance. This is the source. This is the substance. All of these attributes took on this discernible shape and form. This is who's speaking. That's to let us make man in our image after our likeness. He was speaking to himself, himself his substance. That's who was speaking. And I, it's in Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. I, we're not going to read it, but if you want me to, if you want to prove it, it's in Proverbs, 22nd chapter, and it tells you who it is that's speaking. But that's to let us, that's the son speaking in Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, but that's not my point. So that, he, this is him, before his, sub, read it again, about the substance. <laughs> Psalms 139. Mm -hmm, 15. And 15. Mm -hmm. My substance was not hid from thee mm -hmm. when I was made in secret. When I was made in secret, my substance was not hid from thee, read. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. And read. Thine eyes did see my substance, mm -hmm. yet being unperfect. Yet being unperfect, this is Joshua speaking, this is Joshua speaking, yet being unperfect, not the way we think unperfect is, but yet being not unperfect, I mean, yet being unperfect, read. And in thy book, all my members were written. In thy book, all of my members were written. We make up the body of Joshua. All of the believers, all of the sons make up the body of Joshua. In thy book, all my members were written, read. Which were in continuance. Which were in continuance. Were fashioned. Were fashioned. With, when as yet there was none of them. When as yet, it wasn't even any of them yet. They weren't on the scene yet. That proves that it was already done here. Right? Hebrews 
five and nine? When Yahshua was made perfect? Is that it? Five and nine? Hebrews five and nine? When Yahshua was made perfect? And remember Hebrews 11 chapter where it talks about um, they without us are not, they can't be made perfect without us? What is that talking about? That's talking about all of those who were supposed to make up the body of Yahshua. We are waiting for that last soul to come in so we can shut the lights off and go home. That's why the gospel has to be preached to every creature so we can go home. Read. I read. Hebrews 5 and, <clears throat> 5 and 9. I think that's it. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Yahshua being made perfect. He obeyed. That's how he was made perfect when he obeyed all the way to the cross. And after he obeyed all the way to the cross, then after that, when Yahshua, Yahweh raised him from the dead and the Holy Spirit was poured out, nobody has an excuse anymore. We are in the day of judgment right now. Now, so let's pick up, so we talked about Abraham first. Yahweh did gave, give unto Abraham Isaac. He gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, right? Jacob had the 12, tribes of, 12 sons of Israel, became 12 tribes. Yahweh said, no, for sure they were going to go down, so they had to go down. And then you had to, for them to come out, you had to have a death, the death of the lamb, right? That's like just a type and shadow of Yahshua, the death of the lamb. Then they had to come to and through the Red Sea. They had to, be, they had to wander out in the wilderness for 40 years, and all of the old Israel had to die off. And when they got here, then Yahshua, the son of Nun, had to be made known unto them. Once he was made known unto them and they crossed over, what happened? He gave them judges. You heard what I said. After Yahshua took off the body, as Yahshua, the son of Nun, after his death, he gave them judges. That's the judgment, right? And after all that transpired, then they had to go into the temple, and you had a court for the Jews and a court for the Gentiles. And that's the, like, the type and shadow of the immortality, because now you've entered into the body of Yahshua, all of those who were to be saved, right? Let's pick it up in the law and in the prophets, though, because I don't have a lot of time. So when you look at the high priest, right? Now, again, the wages of sin is death. So whenever they would sin, Yahweh gave them this tabernacle here to offer up sacrifices, right? And so after they had to offer up sacrifices, Yahweh made it away on the Day of Atonement before Aaron even put, stepped into the tabernacle. His garments of beauty and glory were made, right? Do you know that the garments of beauty and glory that the high priest Aaron had, it had 12 stones in the breastplate, picking up the 12 tribes of Israel on each shoulder, picking up the 12 sons of Jacob, and on the hem of his garments, you had the pomegranates and the bells picking up the Gentiles. So in the body of the high priest, you had everybody represented. And so what the high priest had to do on the Day of Atonement is go up into the most holy place before the judgment seat because somebody sinned, they had to, there's a death. And so now he has to go to the judgment seat and he has to offer up blood three different times, three different trips, right? The first time for himself, second time for the people, and then he had to put on the garments of beauty and glory to have everybody with him on that third trip. And then he saw the Shekinah flash. That was a type and a shadow of immortality after the death and the judgment. That's the, that's, that's the eschatology. So what does it mean for us right now, though? So when we tell you, okay, you know what? There's no letter J. You have to believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. How do we know that Yahshua is the Son? What Yahweh did was he laid down ways for you to understand and know who his son is way back in the law and in the prophets. And so when Yahshua comes in and he fulfills everything written of him, we have no way to not know that he's Yahshua. So what was he doing? So when you look at the end from the beginning and you look at Adam here, Adam was a gardener, right? He told the woman, Satan came to the woman, he didn't come to the man. So don't touch, he told both of them, but the woman touched of the tree of, the, uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? died in her conscience, right? And so in the fulfillment, in the end of it, when Yahshua's fulfilling it, after he resurrected, because this was after Adam was in a deep sleep, like unto death, woman was brought to him, whatever, right? So after he resurrected, the woman was there, Mary Magdalene, and she supposed he was a gardener. Why did she think he was a gardener? 
Because you got to pick up Adam. Adam died in his conscience. Where did Yahshua die? Golgotha, place of the skull, right? So, so then, she got ready to touch him. Rabboni, that sounds so lame. <laughs> but anyway, what did he say? Touch me not. In the beginning, she disobeyed. In the end, she has to obey. Why is that? Because now we have to enter into immortality. We had to bring it down as the degenerator, and Yahshua had to bring it up as the regenerator. Yahshua's the generator. The first Adam was the degenerator. The second Adam is the regenerator. And so it's so many other things that he fulfilled. So when you get to Noah, Noah's name means comforter, right? What did Yahshua say in the 14th chapter of John? Yahweh was send a comforter in my name. Why you got Why you gonna be a comforter? I gotta pick up Noah. Noah removed the curse off the ground. That was cursed. Yahshua removed the curse off of us, being a curse himself. No, he got to pick up Noah. Same thing. The ram caught in the thicket by his horns. So many, the lamb, same before the foundation of the world. You had the lamb down here. Yahshua picked up everything. And so if that's the case then, we have no reason not to, but he said, I have greater witness than that of John. The works that I do testify of me that I am the son of Yahweh. But, somebody else may pick up blood, water, spirit, 40. But when Yahshua comes in to your heart and in your mind, and you are able to believe that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh and that Yahweh did raise him from the dead, that's when you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're not made perfect yet, but you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And then you begin to be taught of Yahweh in his ways. You become a new creature, right? I ain't say you're going to be a full grown. No, you got to grow up in this thing. You're going to make some mistakes. But the Holy Spirit keeps you from sinning against Yahweh. That's, it's a sin not unto death. There's so many things we did and we didn't know that we were going against Yahweh. You didn't know that Yahweh's name, that the creator's name was Yahweh. That's what you were taught. But now that you know, you can't keep on calling him Lord. You can't, it, even old people, you can't, oh my God. You can't keep on doing that. Exodus 23 and 13, you can't even, he don't even want you to, he don't even want to hear it out your mouth. He said he'll take the name of Baal out of your mouth. So, that being the case then, new and old, you are being judged right now by the things out of your own. If your conscience condemns you, Yahweh is greater than your conscience. When you know that, when you hear it, and you think it's you talking, that's wisdom crying unto you, telling you don't do that, or yes, do this. Revelation 22nd chapter, real quick. Now, I ain't got time. So John <laughs> saw it, sorry. So John saw it. From the end to the beginning, right? And so when you read in Revelation 22 chapter, it talks about those whose name was not written in the book of life. What is John talking about? Because he saw from the end to the beginning. He had already saw Yahweh blotted everybody out already that was going to sin against him. But read Revelation 22 chapter when you get home, when you get to your room, and it explains what I'm saying. But the whole point that I'm trying to make right now, everybody has to go through a death. Hopefully it's a death. You're dying out of your old self and not dying Spiritually so. But once you, are, once you die out of your old self, your old way of thinking, the old things that you used to think that were righteous and were not, then you're judged by those things. And hopefully, it is the judgment unto righteousness. And if it is, then that's when you enter into the body of Yahshua and receive immortality. Because we all have to take this thing off. And hopefully, you'll be clothed with the knowledge of the truth and with Yahshua. Because every, it's a ceiling going on. You're going to be either raised unto life or raised unto damnation. But after the Holy Spirit, is, uh, the gospel is preached unto you, after it's preached unto you, you believe you're translated into the body of Yahshua. Right. If you deny it, you're translated into, you, uh, you are translated into the body of death, which is Satan. There is something called reprobate. And so it is a, our job is to preach it to you. Noah's job was to preach it. He wasn't beating the bushes. He didn't drag Ham and Japheth and Shem into the ark and throw them down. You better get in this ark. It wasn't his job to make anybody go into the ark. His job was to preach it. We're good watchmen. The blood is off our head. Hallelujah. I'm oh, sorry.
Thank you. Our next speaker is Frank Lewis from Springfield, Ohio. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I enjoyed the previous speaker, what was said. And it's, it's right what she said there. And uh, this is the greatest teacher on earth. It came by way of a divine vision and revelation. That's how the Bible is written. And the only way you're going to understand it is, is through vision and revelation. And this is a vision and revelation. If you don't have natural vision, you can't see natural things. So if you don't have spirit vision, you are not seeing spiritual things. You understand? And we're not against people. But we are against false doctrines off the people. And, you know, you might come here and say, oh, I don't want them deceiving me. Too late. You've already been deceived. <laughs> it's time for you to come up and learn something. This is a school and not a church. And the previous speaker, what was said, uh, there was a, I mean, well, right here is eschatology on the elementary chart, okay? And when it talks about the, well, there's a lot. The book sealed with seven seals. <laughs> and here it says the Sabbath, seven sealed open. And the Sabbath, that's the next dispensation we're getting into. We're in the sixth dispensation. Uh, just like you had six days you work, seven if you rest, well, he's going to burn it all up, so you'll be at your rest. There won't be no physical body, no job, and none of that stuff. Uh, and w one of the scriptures here is Revelation 6, 17. Read that. And then over here is eschatology at the end, and this is plate 38 on their 40-plate chart. See, this man must have had a vision revelation to put everything on pictorial form and make it simple so that anybody can understand. People can disagree with us, but there is nobody going to disprove what we say. And we take all comers. We're not afraid of it. Read on. Revelation 6, 17. Yeah. For the great day of his wrath is come. And the great shall... day of his wrath is come. Read. And who shall be able to stand? Who's going to be able to stand? Uh, Yahshua and you. <laughs> Matter of fact, get Romans 5 and 9. That's what he's saving you from. He saved you from your sins 1900 and some years ago. But read Romans 5 and 9. Didn't get 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10 and, and 5 and 9, I think it is. Go ahead. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We we justified by his blood. See, it's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. That's in Leviticus 17 and uh, 11. He put it on the altar to make atonement for the soul. And so when he died, that made the atonement for all the souls that was ever going to, all the ones that was before he died, see, all the ones before he died, all the ones that was living during that time, and then took us, that's going to come. Read. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We're going to save from wrath through him. That's what you're saved from, is, his, is the wrath of Yahweh. And the wrath means great anger. Now, why is he angry? Because you don't believe him. <laughs> and you can call him a liar. He ain't happy for that. And it's in uh, Psalm 711 that he's angry with the wicked every day. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. You got the other ones? First Thessalonians 1 and 10. Yeah. And to wait for his son from heaven. Yeah. Whom he has raised from the dead. Even Yahshua, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Yahshua delivers us from the wrath to come. See, that's how, he's in the soul-saving business. You got 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9? 1 um, Thessalonians 5 and 9. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath. He has but, not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. But to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. And one, the verses he has up here, he has heaven, 
And really, uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, you are in heaven. It says truth and life. Now read Isaiah 66 and 5. Just kind of reading what he got written up there. Isaiah 66 and 5? Yes. Yeah. And this might, this might touch you right here. Read. Hear the word of Yahweh. Hear the word of Yahweh. Ye that tremble at his word. Mm -hmm. Your brethren that hated you. The bre your brethren that hate you? Not here. Read. They cast you out for my name's sake. They cast you out for my name's sake. They don't like you because you preach his name. Read. Said, let Yahweh be glorified. Let Yahweh be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy. But he's going to appear to your joy, salvation, eternal life. Read. And they shall be ashamed. But they're going to be ashamed. You don't know who you... <laughs> anyway, 1 John 3 and 1. The other one he's got there is 1 John 3 and 2. But might as well start 3 and 1. 1 John 3 and 1. Uh -huh. Behold, what manner of love... The Father hath bestowed upon us. Yeah, what manner of love the Father, and that was 1,900 years ago, and we're in the same age. So that's why it, it touches us too. <laughs> same Holy Spirit. Uh, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Read. That we should be called the sons of Yahweh. That we should be called, and ain't no saints, ain't no Christians, that we should be called sons of Yahweh. And in Galatia, Galatians 4 and 4, it says Yahweh, uh, I mean, <laughs> Yahshua was made of a woman made under the law to redeem them from the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we're sons, Yahweh hath forth the, forth the spirit of his son into your heart. See, he's supposed to be in you. You understand? But the world's got him gone away and going to come back one day. Now, he's the head of the church. Can you live without your head? Showing they're dead. And we were too. See, as was read earlier, John 17 and 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and, etern and, and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. We didn't know when we came down here. So we were dead. And also, when Adam, when they died in the garden, well, Romans 8 and 6 says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, life and peace. And that's what the Holy Spirit can do. You come to, he can transform your mind from being carnally minded. All you see is physical things. That's all you look at. You ain't seeing the Spirit. You got too much physical things on your mind. But he can transform your mind and you can receive the Holy Spirit and you become spiritually minded. That's the power of the gospel of Yahshua. See? Okay. Oh, boy. So... Uh, to be carnally mine, it's death. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, you got. Hmm. So when Yahweh told him in the day that Yahweh Elohim commanded him, of every tree of the garden, you freely eat, but tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat, for the day that you do, you'll surely die. Why did he mention death first thing? Because he goes by a pattern, and the first thing in the pattern, the first vessel is concerning death. And so he said, the day treated of you'll surely die. Well, she was deceived, she ate, gave her husband, he did eat, and they died in their conscience or soul. And that death passed upon all men. Okay? So that was a spiritual death because they were naked and not ashamed. And then by the time they ate, they were ashamed of their nakedness. They're hiding from Yahweh. They're afraid of Yahweh. Big change in their mind. You understand? See? And so they need to say it. So one man died to bring sin into the world, and one man died to take it out. Okay? Uh, and so, and you'll read in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that eat the fruit thereof shall live by it. So you see, Yahweh told him, don't eat, did you do, you'll surely die. Devil said, you won't surely die, go ahead and eat. Well, that was death in the power of the tongue, and she did die. In her conscience, her soul, okay? And so it takes Joshua Messiah, who is, in John 14 and 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And if you look on this chart, you'll see judgment here. And she ran a good little line on that. And you'll see clouds here. And before we came into the school, we ain't nothing, no, no, nothing about no, oh, we didn't finish 1 John 3 and 2 now. Or 3 and 1, we didn't finish that, sorry. And read the second verse. Second verse. Beloved, 
Now are we the sons of Yahweh. We're the sons of Yahweh. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we And I think at the end of the first verse, did it say that they don't going back to the first yes, verse? Yes, please. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. That we should be called sons of Yahweh. Read. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. The world don't know us. The world knoweth us not. Read. Because it knew him not. It didn't know him. And if they didn't believe him and nailed him to the cross, and that was Yahweh in a body at 33, and they didn't believe him, what do you think they're going to do with you? They're going to believe you? So you ain't shaking us. I don't believe that. Well, you ain't the first one. And you sure enough ain't going to be the last one. But you should believe it. And, only, and right within the word believe, you got be lying to Eve. Instead of believing the truth, you'd rather be lied to. Read. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh. We're the sons of Yahweh. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Yeah. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Yeah. For we shall see him as he is. Yeah, we're, we should see him as he is, for, you know. Uh, and we're going to receive a, a, a spirit body. You understand? That's, that's the good news, that there's a mortal glorification in the new earth state. And that just starts the fifth age. He's got six and seven coming. See, people wonder about the end of the world. Well, end of the world, oh, I, I don't know about that. Well, it's kind of like days of the week. Uh, it's first day like Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know Wednesday's got to end so Thursday can come. So this age got to end so that he can bring in the next age. That's it. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now right here he's got clouds. And people, well, before we come to this class, we didn't know Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud. Didn't know that. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley said, you can't start Genesis 1-1. No there ain't no cloud there. You understand? And so when the children of Israel come up out of the land of Egypt, they were, like, they were led by a cloud. Pillar of fire by night, cloud by day. And it was a phenomenal cloud because it was light to the Israelites but darkness to the Egyptians. And those that were in light, they, were, they resurrected. The ones that were in darkness, they died. So you had by death, burial, resurrection, children of Israel saved. And Pharaoh and his host cast into the Red Sea, showing that by the preaching of the gospel, he can cast demons out of you and save your soul. Just a real, real quick one on that. Then that, they followed that cloud, and that cloud stood upon Mount Sinai, and he spoke down the Ten Commandment law on June 6th from a fiery cloud. You understand? Then Moses, like the previous speaker was talking about, in Exodus 24, 9 through 11, we ain't never heard that before. A lot of us didn't know they saw the Creator, because uh, uh, John 1.18 says, no man has seen God any time. 1 John 4 and 12, no man has seen God any time. That's, that's, that's King James Version. But the same Bible <laughs> says, then went up Moses there, and they had him by you in the 70 years of Israel, and they saw the Elohim, or God of Israel. And there was under his feet a paved work of silver stone. Body of heaven is clear. It's upon no children of Israel. He laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and didn't even drink. Now, how you got two places saying no man has seen him? And 74 saw it. And then on top of that, we tell you why they saw it. <laughs> because before you can write about a creation, Moses, you have to have, the creator has to appear to you and show it to you. And it says Moses went up into the cloud in the 15th verse. Okay? Then it said the cloud, and it was 40 days, 40 nights. So when he saw the creation come in, he saw it in a fiery, while well, he was in a fiery cloud atop of Mount Sinai. So declaring the end from the beginning, if he saw the beginning or the creation in his vision in a fiery cloud, how's it going in? In a fiery cloud. How'd you come, how, how you, what was your beginning when mom and pop were on fire? <laughs> and how'd you, come in, how'd you come in this world? She was on fire. You understand? And you know, and, and how does the chicken come in? Well, it warms them up. Comes in, comes in on fire, and we put it in the frying pan. Go out and fire. <laughs> Yahweh declares the end from the beginning. Okay? And so, 
And then when this tabernacle was finished nine months later, like you are, you'll find out that this cloud covered the tabernacle and the glory filled it. Why the cloud covered? Because the where he Moses saw it in the cloud, he's now endorsed that it was done correctly. See, declaring the end from the beginning again. You understand? And then they had to follow that cloud. Everywhere the cloud went, they had to pick up and go and follow it. And somebody said, I don't believe that. Well, I tell you what, you drink enough water, your cloud's going to tell you you better get rid of it. <laughs> or they're going to see your wet pants and you look like a fool. You understand? <laughs> so you better take care of that. You understand? That's following the cloud. Whatever he, oh, see, cloud, a cloud is gray and white matter. Just like under your brain. See? And right within the word brain, you got be rain. You want the Holy Spirit be raining in your heart and mind. You understand? And on a cloud, don't it have rain? Well, you have the cerebral spinal fluid that flows down. So it's showing forth, like it says in John 7, 37, he who believed me is in the scriptures that said, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus he spake the Holy Spirit. You say, is there living water coming out from the bellies? Well, your ventricles, where the cerebral spinal fluid flows from, ventricle means bellies. You understand? And then in Leviticus 16 and 2, Yahweh said he will dwell in the cloud between the wings of the cherubim upon the uh, mercy seat, upon the Ark of the Covenant. You understand? You see, and, that, and that's correlated with your head region. We can't say everything. Get uh, Daniel 7.13. And you know what? That's what happened when this temple was finished. In 1 Kings 8 and 10, it said the cloud covered it and the glory filled it. And, and the priest couldn't go in there to minister because now the spirit's in there. Can't be no flesh. You understand? See, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, ain't no room for the devil. But if you ain't filled, plenty of room for them demons to deceive you. You understand? Read. Daniel 7 and 13. Yes. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. One like the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Read. And came to the Ancient of Days. Yeah. And they brought him near before him. Yeah. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages... Ain't that the king in the cloud? Now read 22. 22. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the sons of oh, the Most Oh, do you high. see that? That's what the previous speaker talking about. After his death, burial, resurrection, he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. And it was said the other day, and it's on the chart with the judgment, that right here at the end of this age where Yahshua Messiah died, it said the Messiah had often have suffered since the, since the beginning of the world, but now once in the end of the world. Hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself? That was the end of the world there. And then, and then he dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and then says, and after, and it's appointed man once to die. It was testifying to him. He died. After this, the judgment. And you know what? When you talk about the high priest garment, just like there's nine attributes that form that, that, uh, you know, nine principal divine attributes of Yahweh, and he took on shape and form as Elohim. High priest had nine garments. And the first one he put on was the britches. Next thing he put on was a white coat, and you see Noah there with a linen coat on. And then he, then he wrapped it up with a linen girdle, showing he wrapped up the age with the flood. That was the end of a world. You understand? And that's in second. Then... He put on a blue robe. See Melchizedek with the blue robe on? You understand? Then he put on the ephod, which was blue, purple, and scarlet. So when he's on the cross, by his stripes we're healed, and by we were bruised for our iniquities. That's blue, purple, ain't it? You understand? And then he had the curious girl, girdle where he wrapped up. Wrapped up the age <laughs> with his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, out for the Holy Spirit. See that? And the next thing he put on was the breastplate of judgment. See how judgment's right after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension? And then he put on the hat, showing that in this dispensation, he's covering your head with this knowledge and understanding to withstand the wiles of the adversary like the brother was putting on the whole armor of Yahweh. That's a spiritual armor. Helmet of salvation, the 
<laughs> Loins gird about with truth. <laughs> uh, anyway, can't do it all. Feet shed, pred with the, uh, shed with the preparation of the gospel. You understand? You got the shield of faith. The devil hitting you and Josh was knocking them. You know, <laughs> and then you got the sword of the spirit. Yeah, you can get cut down here. <laughs> it's a two-edged sword. Law, prophet, fulfillment. <laughs> you understand? Same way with death, burial, resurrection. And same way with blood, water, spirit. That's the one, two, three punch. In the name of Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. Okay. Uh, boy, we got to go. Uh, did you read? Okay. Uh, no, I can't do that. So anyway, we're down here. Yahshua Messiah, Matthew 7 and 1. People say, you can't judge me. Jesus said, judge not that you should be judged. Well, you didn't know what age that was in. He wasn't talking to you. You wasn't living when he was living. You understand? And he said, he tells them, judge not that you should be judged. Why? They're all sinners. They're all unrighteous. And is my, is my unrighteous judging going to be any better than your unrighteous judging? No, we both wrong. That's why he told him, judge not that you should be judged. But now after his death, burial, resurrection, now for his spirit, like she was saying, that's what this man was thinking about. How's y'all, we going to judge the world and righteous by that one man seeing nobody can agree with each other. You understand? Well, he poured out the Holy Spirit. And 1 Peter 4 and 17 says, judgment must first begin at the house of Yahweh. If he's judging us, what about the unrighteous out there in the world? And this teaching is the judgment of the world. Ever since he's poured out the Holy Spirit, and when he teaches, preaches the true gospel, how Yahshua died, buried, resurrected, ascended, and poured out the Holy Spirit, and you reject it? And we make it simple. See, you ain't never seen nobody close the Bible and preach the gospel till you come down here. The sun goes down every day, S-U-N, showing that the son of Yahweh went down for the sin of the world. When the sun goes down, sky turns red, and sometimes it turns, well, it turns dark. It did it when the true sun was going down for the sin of the world. Then he's buried below the rising, and early in the morning, sun rising. You have faith every, you have faith the sun's going to rise, because you see it happen every day. It's showing you're supposed to have faith that the true son of Yahweh, Yahshua Messiah, did resurrect. Then the sun ascends to its zenith, showing Yahshua Messiah ascended, and then the sun set. And that's really what happened for us. You've been a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. What happened was uh, you were dead and buried when you come into the school, and the Holy Spirit was able to resurrect your soul. And, 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 and in other words, uh, and, and set in your heart and mind. See, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. See, and it says in Psalms 19 and 40, he has set a tabernacle for the sun. And that's a death, burial, resurrection in, from the east. <laughs> sun rises in the east. Sets in the West, most holy place in the West, showing he can set in your heart and mind if you believe. You understand? This is, a bit, you know, this is beautiful stuff here. Now, see, where you have a death physically, in, first, in John 11, see, John 11 chapter, a man died, was dead four days. Yahshua said, Lazarus, come forth. He resurrected. And, uh, and uh, uh, then he said in John 11, 25, he said, I am. The resurrection, the life. He, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yeah, he healed, he, he resurrected that man from after being dead four days. And in John 14 and 12 or 13, it says, it says, if you believe on me, the works I you I do, you can do. And greater works. What's a greater work? And, <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then raise a man after dead four days. Well, after his death, burial, resurrection. Well, he, he proved he was a resurrection life because when he resurrected, he resurrected 4,033 years of souls. That's doing some resurrecting. Then when he poured out the Holy Spirit, he resurrected man's soul then. And, that, and that's what it says the other part. So uh, I'm the resurrection life, John eleven twenty five. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And you'll say, well, 
if you ain't never going to die, then all them brothers like uh, Peter and Paul and Apostle John and all them and Dr. Kinley, they should have never died. We should have 2,000-year-old men around here. No, you will die physically. But your soul is saved through Yahshua. And so what happened is the Holy Spirit was poured out and those brothers preached the true gospel of the kingdom. And as it says in Ephesians 1.13, it says, In whom also you trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. After you believe, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's how you get sealed with the Holy Spirit, is your soul believing in him. You understand? And matter of fact, that's how... And what happened was, when Yash Messiah, right before he ascended in Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And one time I heard Dr. Kinley said, white man's a creature too. Well, I was happy about that. <laughs> every creature is Jew and Gentile. You understand? Uh, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Them that believe not shall be damned. You can be damned not believing this. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall you cast out demons. It's a preaching of the gospel in the name of Yahshua. Demons are cast out. That's what happened. And then you can, and when it says that you that believe and are baptized, sure ain't water. No. no water. Ain't no physical water. See, this labor is the third step of the pattern. The gate's the first step, the altar's the second, and the third step is the labor, has water in it. Third letter in Yahweh's an H, third letter in Elohim's an O, and third letter in Yahshua's an H. That's living water. That's H2O, ain't it? Okay, I got, oh, I got to move. Uh, uh, get Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, last couple of verses. That's what he has down here. He has Ecclesiastes uh, 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 13 and 14. Yeah, but read the 13th verse. 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. You need to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. <laughs> read. Fear Yahweh. And Fear his, Yahweh. And keep his commandments. Yeah. For this is the whole duty of man. Yeah, back then they were under the law. Read. For Yahweh but there's commandments down here too, to the law and to the testimony. Speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Isaiah 8 and 20. Read on. 14. Uh -huh. For Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment. He's going to bring every work into judgment. Read. With every secret thing. Every secret thing. Whether it be good. Yep. Or whether it be evil. Yeah. You're going to be count held accountable. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. That's in the judgment. Read. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Yeah. For we must all appear. For we must all appear. Before the judgment seat of Yahshua. Uh-huh. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Yeah. According to that he has done. He's whether judging Whether it you. be good or bad. And he's, whether it be good or bad. He's judging you on what you understand. If you don't understand something, how can he judge you on it? You didn't understand it. But after you're told, you're in the judgment on that. Okay, okay, Revelation 20 and 14. Mm. Okay, we better do this. The brothers was talking about the rapture thing, and he's got that on this scripture right here. So he's coming down, and then he's got 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. This is where it has immortality at, in the holy place there. Read on. Revelation 20 and 14. Uh-huh. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. You thought hell was the lake. <laughs> he said death and hell was cast in the lake of fire. What's hell? Well, 2 Peter 2 and 4, the Holy Spirit said, Yahweh spared not the angel that sinned, but cast them down to hell and put them in everlasting chains of darkness to be reserved to the... You understand? Well, them demons, I mean, they were demoted... Now there are demons on the earth lying to you because angels are ministering spirits, and there's, that's why there's so many in the ministry. They got a lot to say. You understand? And they're in hell. And if they're in you, that's where you are. Well, didn't Yash Messiah have to cast out demons out of men? So they was in hell. 
And you think there's any demons in man now? A lot of hell going on. <laughs> and so what this gospel does is knock the hell out of you. <laughs> and then you can receive the Holy Spirit and be in heaven. Walking around in heaven on the earth plane. Read. This is the second death. This is the second. That's the second death. Death and life. I mean, death and hell were cast in a lake of fire. This is the second death. There's a second death? See, read. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. You're not found in the book of life? Because it said, whoever sins against me, him I'll blot out. That's why you get blotted out. See, uh, uh, he that, uh, whoever was not found written in the book of life, read. Was cast into the lake of fire. Cast in the lake of fire. But now what? Get, hmm. get Galatians. 2 and 20, and get, uh, uh, oh boy, uh, oh, read, Re in that Revelation 20, I, I can't do it, you know, it, it talks about 2 Peter 3 and 8 being a one day is a thousand years, a thousand years one day, well, the one time it's, a th one, it's just one day being that thousand years is the day Yahshua Messiah resurrected, that's the day he resurrected, that's the thousand years. That happened already. The world thinks in Revelation 20 that ain't happened yet. But read about the 5 and 6 verse there. Can't read it all. Revelation 25 and 6. What does 4, what does the end of 4, just a little bit of the end of 4 say? What does that say? Neither hath received his mark upon their foreheads mm. or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Okay, that's the day he resurrected. Re keep reading. But the rest of the dead... Lived not again. The rest of the dead lived not again. Until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead are those disciples and them. They ain't got the Holy Spirit yet. They had to wait 50 days after the thousand years were finished, after he resurrected. Read. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. You say it ain't happened yet? That's a bad error. You denying the resurrection. That's who Yahshua the Messiah is. Read. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy, he hath part in the first resurrection. He, well, he's calling the first resurrection. Are those brothers that resurrected with him after his resurrection? And the ones that received the Holy Spirit ever since in this age. Resurrection still going on. Read on. On such, the second death. The second death. Hath no power. Hath no power. So that's why if you're born once, you're going to die twice. Because if you're born once, you'll die physically, and you'll go to the lake of fire. That's the second death. But if you're born twice, because you were born physically, and now you're born of the Holy Spirit, that's born twice. You will die physically, or you will leave this physical body. But the second death hath no power over you. You understand? See how it's concerning death? People don't run it like you'll hear it in this school guarantee you. If you do, come on and tell me about it afterward. Okay, read, uh, okay, that's death. All right. Okay, get first uh, Thessalonians 4 and 15. I, I, I could look, let me see what the scripture is he got on here. Uh, first, Thessalonians. first Thessalonians 4 and 16. We'll start 15. At 4 and 15. Mm -hmm. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahshua, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Messiah shall not present, prevent them which are asleep. Now, if you're alive, how are you going to prevent the ones that already took off the flesh? You ain't got that power anyway. <laughs> you ain't preventing them. Of course we're not. They're part of the body. Read. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, it says he shall descend from heaven as a... And right after his death, burial, resurrection here, Dr. Kinley's got heaven over here. See, and in 1 John 5 and 7, it says there's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. So if the Holy Spirit's in you, you're in heaven. Because it says he dwells, he bear record in heaven, don't it? He opened up heaven. And pour, and this is the Holy Spirit. And it was through his death, burial, resurrection. And like he, Dr. Kimley said, through his death, burial, resurrection, he busted hell wide open. <laughs> and, and he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. Okay. Got to move, going close. Uh, uh, and you see him sitting there. So heaven's coming on down there. Okay, so he sees a, he descends from heaven as a shout. So by the pattern, you have a death, 
burial, resurrection, ascension. Remember, he's sitting on the right hand, you know, that, uh, he's descending from heaven with a shout. Why a shout? Because in the migratory pattern, when they went around Jericho, didn't they shout? See, that's the most holy place principle. Read. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Voice of an archangel. There's two archangels on the Ark of the Covenant. So you see where he is? He's descending from there. But if you have a King James Version, it'll say the Lord descended with a shout. No way. Why is that? Because he's everything. Yahweh is. <laughs> you understand? If he's everywhere, everything, and all that, he ain't descending from nowhere. He's everywhere. But he sent, has Yahshua Messiah come down. You understand? See, read. And when the trump of... Come, come, he's, with a shout, voice of an archangel. Read. And the trump of Elohim. Uh-huh. And the dead... And with the, the trump. Did, when they, when, didn't they have trumpets there? And in Revel, hmm, 1 Corinthians, uh, it's with the trump of Ellen. Here in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, see the world says, uh, uh, you know, when you have a funeral, they say, well, they're in heaven now. Dr. Kinley says, you better check the casket. Because <laughs> it's in the Bible that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. You understand? So they're not, they're not, they don't know what's in that Bible. And in Isaiah 65, 17, said, I create new heavens and a new earth for the first heaven first. Well, no. Uh, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the, and the former shall not be remembered, neither shall it come into mind. That means you ain't going to remember. Yeah, if, if you didn't see Grandma and somebody else was there you didn't like, how'd you get here? You'd have the same hell you got... Plus, that wouldn't be heaven because you didn't see your loved one. Read. Read on. With the trump of Elohim and the dead in the Messiah shall rise And that's rise what it'll first. say. At the last trump, the mortal shall take on immortality. And that's why there is a fool here named Trump, but that ain't the last trump. That is a trump, though. And the feast of trumpets is the fifth feast day, and this is the fifth age. See what you're on at now. You're on veils. This sixth dispensation is a veil that, go, that, has, that rents so that the seventh, so you can get into the most holy place. So this got to be burned up so it can usher in you to the most holy or the Sabbath or the, you understand? Into the kingdom of immortality. See, right now you'd be uh, Colossians 1, uh, 12 and 13 Given thanks from the Father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. For he hath delivered us from darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his death. Hath means he done it 1,900 years ago. You understand? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and so, yeah, so this is the fourth age, and then uh, that's a veil too. So you can go into the holy place age wise. You understand? And in the holy place, you ain't got no brass. You got uh, either a vessel overlay with gold or solid gold representing spirit bodies, no fleshly bodies in the fifth age. Okay, okay, I got to move. Can't believe I was going so slow. Keep reading. And the dead and the Messiah shall rise first. The dead and the Messiah shall rise first. Now, she had read, well, she had read, but she talked about it. Uh, Ephesians, I mean... Uh, Hebrews 11.39 says, day without us cannot be made perfect. In other words, we're going to be all receiving at the same time. But when you look at the pattern, then it says in, the, in Revelation 6 and 9, I saw when he opened up the fifth seal, I saw the souls under the altar saying, how long, O holy and true? So the dead Messiah shall rise first. And really, we're all, Dr. Kinley said, Yash Messiah, he ain't coming without me. Because you read in Colossians, <laughs> it, says, it says that when Yahshua shall appear, you shall also appear with him in glory. Yeah. And he, he said, you are dead and your life's hidden, Messiah. So ain't that dead? <laughs> That's what that Galatians 2 and 20 said. Uh, I'm crucified with the Messiah, but yet I live. But not I, but the Messiah lives in me. <laughs> but you're dead there. You see that? And you do have to become dead. To, anyway, got to move, got to move. 
Okay, uh, keep on reading. 17th verse, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. In the clouds. The cloud represents the spirit. See, and this shook them Thessalonians up because they didn't understand that. It's in First uh, Acts 17, 10 that the Bereans were noble them in Thessalonians because they received the word with all readiness in mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Well, they don't understand how I'm going to be up there in the clouds. Anybody ever been on that high? They fall. Gravity will get you. Read. <laughs> To meet Yahshua in the air, yeah. and so shall we ever be with Yahshua. You'll ever be with him. And he says, comfort them with your words. And that shook them up. So we had to write 2 Thessalonians. We learned that in his school. You understand? 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5. What did, how, how many? Second Three minutes, yay. Read on. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5. Yeah. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of Yahweh. Yahweh has a righteous judgment. See, people got him not being right. And every time judgment... In the law, in the prophets, and after the death, burial, resurrection, house, born of the Holy Spirit. It says that he's have judgment without respect of persons. But people are, do have respect of persons. Read. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yahweh. That ye be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yahweh. For which ye also suffer. You suffer. Some Being things ain't so easy. You think things are hard? Go to preach the gospel in Jamaica to people. Read. You might come as a, back with appreciation. See, it is a righteous thing with Yahweh to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. He's going to reward tribulation to them that trouble you. Read. And to you who are troubled, to rest you with are us. troubled, rest with us. Yash Messiah did all the work, and we can you can rest in this knowledge and understanding. Read. When Yash the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven, he with shall his be all. See, that's the rest of it. He shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire because they weren't resurrected. So they're going to the lake of fire. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. People run their mouth and don't even preach the gospel. How do you do that? You, you cannot leave Yahshua out. And Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in none other name. Under heaven, give them on men where by may say that name is Yahshua the Messiah, means Yahweh is salvation. The Jesus don't mean that. If Jesus wants to be saved, you have to come to Yahshua. <laughs> you understand? And he said, Every knee's gonna bow and every tongue's gonna confess that Yahshua is the Savior to the glory of Yahweh. And Yahweh's highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. The name of Yahshua Messiah. Every knee's gonna bow. You gonna bow now? Or you will later. And your knees bend. They don't bow. But this one does. <laughs> It'll have to bow. It'll bow. Everybody's going to confess. So that's the end. So all, uh, if you learn anything, you thank Yahweh on Yahshua. He gave you a physical body. He's got a, a, a immortal glorified body to give you. And you don't want to lose that. Hallelujah. Nothing's worth having your soul damned. Hallelujah. You understand? Know all praise to Yahweh on And our next speaker will be Shirley Nelson of Southfield, Michigan. Oh, this is such a surprise. <laughs> but you know something? I'm always happy to have anything to say about this wonderful gospel. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I mean, it could have been a lot of other things I would have been, could have been doing, but I'm glad Yahweh allowed me to come here and sit and have another opportunity to learn about something for surety that's unto salvation because that's what this is all about. We want to be saved from the destruction that was put on this world and from all souls, to on all souls. 
but it was Joshua the Messiah that came in and had a mighty work to do. I don't have anything new to say. Don't confess to know nothing, saving Joshua the Messiah and him that has resurrected in me. And I know that to be a fact. Because what I say now today, I didn't know before I came into this gospel. I didn't have a clue about it. I was in darkness and I was in ignorance because I didn't know my Heavenly Father. And when I came down here and sat for the first time, they told me a divine name that I didn't understand that he even had. It meant nothing to me. And I want you to go over there and get that over there when it talked about it. one of the speakers, first speaker had it read, I think it's over in Romans where it says something similar that they, them, that did, them that believe on the name. Do the readers know what I'm speaking of? Um, I think it's over there in Romans. But I did not know that Yahweh was the true name of our Heavenly Father and that he had a divine title of Elohim and that the name of the Savior is Yahshua the Messiah or the Holy Spirit, see. I had no clue that these were titles, Lord, and that God was a title and that Jesus Christ was an erroneous name. And I also didn't know that Yahweh had a purpose and a plan. I thought it was about what I thought or what my family thought. See, my concept and my opinion, but Yahweh told me, set me down and said, no, you didn't know anything. I'm going to resurrect your heart and your soul to something that will afford you eternal life forever, eternally. See, that's what he did in giving me his true name. And if I believe on that, which I do, see, then he said that I've got something for you. Now, I said that Yahweh had a purpose. Go over there and get me Isaiah. And I think it starts over there in 45 where he's saying just that. See, that I am Yahweh and I purpose it. Um, you know where it's at. Is that 45 or 46? I have purposed it. I will also Isaiah do it. Isaiah 46. Okay. Mm -hmm. Starting at 9, going okay. through 10. Read. Remember the former things of old. He's saying, now remember the former things of old. Read. For I am Yahweh, mm -hmm. and there is none else. See, I am Yahweh, and there is none else. See, we thought there were other gods. A previous, one of the previous speakers said that. He said, but there is none else. Read. I am Yahweh, and mm -hmm. there is none like me. And there's none like me. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning. Uh-huh. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Now, saying, he already went to say, it's already been said, he declared the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Read. Saying, mm -hmm. my counsel mm -hmm. shall stand, mm -hmm. and I will do all my pleasure. See, it's Yahweh's counsel that will stand. You understand this, people? We all had to come and understand that. Not my ideal, not my thoughts, but it's Yahweh's counsel. It's his purpose that's going to be carried out. See, read. Calling a ravenous bird mm -hmm. from the east, mm -hmm. the man that executed my counsel mm -hmm. from a far country. Mm -hmm. Yea, I have spoken it. Yahweh will, said, yea, I have spoken it. Read. I will also bring it to pass. I will bring it to pass. He does not just say something don't happen. See, it's going to come to pass the way he said it. See, that's why we don't have to worry about a whole lot of stuff. See, what we have to do is learn about Yahweh and watch Yah work because he's working all through the ages and dispensations. He's laid out a plan, and it will not, that purpose won't return to him void. You see what I'm saying? It's going to accomplish what he said it will do. So right from the beginning, our creator Yahweh, from the very beginning of time, had a real purpose in mind, see? You see what I'm saying? And we come in here and we talk about these three. This was this age of conscience, and it says over here that in Adam all die. Now we come to learn that going over here to this chart here, the, um, which is the chart on the pattern plan of salvation. I always find myself coming to this chart. See, because it took me a while to understand what happened here. But Yahweh having a purpose, already purpose within himself. See, he purposed, see, that the man was going to come down out of this 
lofty state that he was in. See, because when he created Adam up in here, see, Adam, he created this man from the dust of the ground, see, and Yahweh placed in him, see, this ability, see, or he, when he created him, he then had to go and create a helpmate for Adam, see, but he's up in here in this garden, and Yahweh gave him a commandment not to touch to eat or eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now we can have a whole lot of thought about this transgression that happened down here in the very beginning, see. But again, as I said, this is the chart on the pattern or the plan of salvation. So he's got something working here that's a mystery until it's revealed. So now this Adam, as I thought, as long as he do and see, he were, or that this we were purpose, or that it was purpose that the mankind was going to remain in this state forever, see. But something happened while they were up there that, see, nobody that God or Yahweh didn't even know what happened, right? See, but Yahweh did know what would happen, see. Because you see Adam over here, which Adam is a type. See, if you will, he's the first man, Adam. Yahshua Messiah is going to come in. He's calling himself the second man, Adam. But see, now, Adam, see, is representing Yahshua up in here. You see what I'm saying? So he's a type, if you will. Now, he's sitting here, and he's watching this event. Because when Yahweh, he had formed the man of the dust of the ground, he had created the animal, see, all of the creatures of the earth that crawled upon the earth, Yahweh created them. You see what I'm saying? He did all of that, you understand, see? And then he looked around and he said, it's not good for a man to be alone. And so he created Eve, see, for the man. Or what he did was he just took Eve right out of Adam, see? In other words, he took a rib and a wound from Adam, see? And then he made this woman and said that she would be called woman because she was drawn out of Eve. In other words, that wound or that flesh and the rib or that bone, and that's why Adam then has to say, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my my flesh, talking about how she was drawn right out of him. Now, this woman Eve, see, she is the bride or likened to the bride or the assembly, if you will, see. That's what she's representing, see, here. So now, Satan, he appears on the scene, right? It just happenstance that he came about, right? Nobody wasn't prepared for that, right? They weren't prepared for it, but Yahweh certainly was. You see, he's created this for a purpose, see, because he's, he's, he's got a purpose, and his purpose was the mankind was going to come down. Why? Because I have written this story. I'm going to bring him down just so that I can bring him down, just so that I can bring him on back up. You understand? He's got that purpose already written, see, in stone, if you will. In other words, it's not going to be changed no matter what we try or what, what we will want it to be. So they had to come down. So those serpents, see, he sit here and he duped the woman. See, he has to know some parts of the truth. And that's why when she came, when he came to Eve, see, he had to say to Elohim, say that you shouldn't eat of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. And she said, Go ahead and read. Pick that up, if you will. Nah, my mouth is so dry. Is there water? Boy, I tell you, more than an ocean. I said, they didn't call on me. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh -uh. But I'm happy to have something to say. It might be that much, but that much I know. And it's that much, see, that takes me, I had, a, I had a relative or friend, I can't remember who I was talking to just recently, and they talked about how that they were the only one in the whole wide place that they were at. See, only one that they knew, knew some about this teaching. Do you know how spectacular that is? Sometimes we sit here and we take it for granted. When we've been in, coming here, we were talking to uh, May at the, while we were eating. I said, how long have we been doing this? She said, 12 years. 12 years, but she said that Chicago's been doing it. It's been how long? 15 years. Okay. I mean, who would, yeah, who would have knew? Who would have thunk it, so they said, in the very beginning? I think she said, we thought we would do it for no more than three years. But every year, we're expecting to come here to Chicago. It's the easiest place to be. I mean, if you can say it like that. I mean, it seems like you can get to Chicago from everywhere, I guess. 
you know, and it's like one of these things that we look forward to. If I don't go anywhere else, I seem to be coming to Chicago. It's easy for me, you know, and I thank Yahweh for that. So we don't want to take it for granted, but sometimes what he makes me realize when I come in here and sit down is still how precious this is, see, and how grateful we ought all to be and never forget that the simplicity of this gospel is so beautiful, is so great, is so monumental that Yahweh set me down, little old me, and told me something about himself. And I just can't say it enough. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't say that enough. Did I have a scripture? Genesis 3 and 1. Okay, go ahead with Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent mm -hmm. was more subtle than any beast right. of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You see how he just twisted that up? Has Elohim said that you may not eat of the tree of the fruit of the garden? Of the garden? And she corrected him. Why? Because she knew. She knew when the commandment had been given, even though she hadn't been taken out of Adam at the time. But she knew that, being part of his body. We may eat of every fruit, every tree of the garden, but the tree that's in the midst of the garden, don't eat it, don't touch it, least ye die. So Yahweh put a commandment, see, if you will, on them. You see what I'm saying? Well, now what happened? Go ahead, read. Four, and the mm -hmm. serpent said unto the woman, mm -hmm. you shall not surely die. Now, Yahweh said that you will surely die when you eat this. So look, were they alive at this point in time? They were flesh and blood, and they were breathing, and they were alive. Go ahead, read. And uh, for Elohim does know mm -hmm. that in the day you eat thereof, mm -hmm. then your eyes shall be opened. Now, they were not in with walking around the garden with their eyes closed. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said, Elohim know that in the day you eat, see, your eyes shall be open. Well, what is he talking about? Previous speaker said, see, right here at this point in time, before the serpent duped them, their eyes were open, but it wasn't open to the flesh. See, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, it wasn't open to that. They're in a spiritual high lofty state, if you will. They're innocent in this state. See, there's no, they're just in heaven, more or less. You see what I'm saying? So the devil's saying, when you touch of this tree and eat of it, your eyes shall be open. See, what is he talking about? Now it's going to be open to the flesh. See, so the state, as the previous speaker talk, talked about, is going to be changed. It's going to be altered. It's a different state. And they were naked and they weren't ashamed up in here. And so now Eve, thinking that she can obtain something that she really already had, she chooses or desires to take of that fruit of the tree and to break that commandment. Then she gave to her husband, I think she's going to read that, and he did eat. Do we come up to that part yet? No. Um, that's in six. Next one. Okay. Um, I'll continue with five. For Elohim does know that mm -hmm. in the day you eat thereof, then mm -hmm. your eyes shall be opened, mm -hmm. and you shall be gods, knowing mm -hmm. good and evil. That you will know good and evil up here. You'll be like gods. Read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for mm -hmm. food, and that it was pleasant to mm -hmm. the eyes, mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired right. to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof she took and of this did fruit? eat. Did eat? And did what? And gave also unto her husband. Gave unto her, her husband. Now and he's he sitting over eat. here watching this, right? <laughs> Says she gave to her husband, you see, and he did eat. Read. And he did eat mm -hmm. also with her husband with her, and he did eat. And mm -hmm. the eyes of them both were open. And it says the eyes of them both were open. They didn't have those eyes closed. When this was brought out to me, I was like, aha, uh -huh, finally, I understand what happened. You see what I'm saying? Their eyes were not closed from a natural standpoint, but it was closed to the spirit, see? So their eyes were open, and what? What does it say? And they knew that they were naked. And now they know that they're naked. And I think the previous speaker went over that. See, now they know that they're naked. Whereas before, they are in an innocent state, just like a baby, walking around naked and not ashamed. 
So something happened. Now they're condemned in their heart and mind, which is a heart and mind is synonymous. Now it's condemned. It's a condemned state they're in. And they were driven out of this garden, as we see here. Now this is starting this purpose. And if you see over here in this garden, where, in this plate, where it says Adam is driven out, you see the sun over here going down, see? Because, see, this being that son of Yahweh, if you will, see, when this ethereal son is coming, coming, it's going down, but when he's coming down in his heart and mind or his consciousness, this son is being reflected of what's happening here. Do you understand? Just as he told you about that true son, Yahshua Messiah. See, it's just this son, the ethereal one, is just a type and shadow of that true reality, the true son. That's why we say that true son, see, or Yahshua Messiah, he's just too hot to handle, just like this one is, see. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have to become that fire, too. You understand? Because fire don't burn fire, see. And so now we have to become where he in us and we in him. Of course, I'm getting ahead of the game. Because what I want to say is that they came on down here, see, and they were cast out or driven out of the garden, see. And that started a whole state where they had to work by the sweat, or Adam had to work by the sweat of his brow, see. And Yahweh told the man that because he sinned, he would have to work by the sweat of his face. And so it said here, see. And that Eve, see, that she would have to bear children. And when I was coming up, and I've said this so many times, when we were coming up, my mom would say, she said that the child having pain in childbearing and going through bearing a child, that if a woman was to die while she was bearing a child, then that's when she would be saved. That's what she interpreted, that the woman will be saved in childbearing. That's not meaning that you're going to be saved if you die while you're bearing a child. What it's talking about is that through the loins of a woman, see, or through childbearing itself, Yahweh had already purposed that a Savior was going to come in. I told you that he's got a purpose here. See, so he brought the man down because there was going to be a second man, Adam, that had to come in and bring the man up. I want the scripture over in Galatians where it talks about that he was uh, born up, up, you know where it's at. Go and get it, right. Is this the one I have? Mm -hmm. Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 and mm -hmm. 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son made of a woman. Now see, this is the law. old stuff. But when the fullness of time has come, see, what are you talking about, see? After, see, Yahshua Messiah has to come in. He's got to be born, see. You understand what I'm saying? saying? He had to be born. He had to live, see. He had to go through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his outpour of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because this death of Adam, I need you to go over there and get that for me too, first of all, where it talks about that this death, that was perpetrated on this man, see here, Adam, this death, see, it passed upon all men, see. If you can get it, see, it wasn't just an isolated thing here. There was some significance that happened, see, when Adam and Eve, when this trans, or I'll say it like this, when this transgression occurred. Um, give me that scripture over there where it talks about the death passed upon Romans all men. Romans 5, I'll start at, thir uh, start at 12. Okay. Wherefore, as by one man sin, sin entered into the world. See, as by one man the sin entered into the world. Read. And death by sin. And death by sin. In other words, if something particularly happened as this man, as this sin came into the world. Death. You see what I'm saying? That was the penalty for this sin. So death passed upon all men. Why? And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. For all have sinned. Because of this one man, that was considered that all men had sinned. You see that? Now, this is a beautiful story. I'm saying it like this, and I'm trying to pinpoint it and bring it out like that, because when Yahweh showed that to me through Yahshua Messiah, through the preaching of this gospel, I didn't know what I was doing out there before. I didn't know what Yahweh's purpose was. He said, but this death passed by one man. It passed upon all men. Read. For until the law, mm -hmm. 
sin was in the world. For until the law, sin was in the world. Read. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. It's not imputed where there is no law. Read. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. death reigned from Adam to Moses. From Adam over to Moses, and Moses is considered as the lawgiver or the law. Right. So now read. So at death passed from Adam all the way up to Moses. Read. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even if you hadn't been back here, people, death passed upon all men. Read. Who is the figure of him that was to Who come. Who was a figure. Talking about this Adam over here was a figure of him was to come. Now read. Is there more of that? Mm -hmm. If not, go over there to the last scripture that we have because I'm saying that this death passed upon all. See, that's Galatians 4 and 4. If you will. Galatians 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come, mm -hmm. Yahweh sent forth his son, mm -hmm. made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. So here Yahshua Messiah is. He comes in to redeem them that are under the law. See, in other words, Yahshua Messiah, he's born under the law, made subject to the law to redeem them that was under the law. Read. That we might receive the mm -hmm. adoption of sons. Mm hmm and because ye are sons, mm -hmm. Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into mm -hmm. your hearts, crying, Abba, mm -hmm. Father. Right. So Yahshua Messiah had to come in. And he had to undergo a death, a burial, and a resurrection. You see what I'm saying? See, it had to be as a result of that. He had to be crucified. You see what I'm saying? He had to be buried in the heart of the earth for three days. And then he had to resurrect. And then on, the thir on that, when he resurrected on that third day, see, then that outpour of the Holy Spirit had to be placed or poured out on all mankind. You understand? See, it had to be poured on, on all mankind. And now mankind has the ability to have the Holy Spirit in them, see, or in the heart and mind. Or in other words, at this Pentecost, see, see, the man was restored to where they had that heavenly state, if you will. In other words, going through that process, see, where death, we didn't even know we were dead. That's why the previous speaker said when you walked into here, you were dead on arrival, basically, dead to the understanding of who your creator was. We didn't know that Yahweh was spirit, see. You see what I'm saying? We didn't have an understanding that spirit was the source substance, limits and bounds of all things. See, we didn't understand that Yahweh in his pure spirit state, see, cannot be understood in this particular state, see, and that Yahweh had to reveal himself to mankind. We didn't see that, didn't understand it. And Yahweh deci deciding or desiring to reveal himself to man or to his creation, see, came out or broke himself down, if you will, from this high and lofty state See, into the shape and form of Yahweh Elohim, this incorporeal being seen in visions and understood in revelation. See, we couldn't understand that he had this purpose, see, and that he would reveal himself to these 70 elders and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and Moses here in this vision. And as the previous speaker talked about, they saw this visionary form here, see, but we couldn't even understand how could you see things? How could you see something that's invisible? Romans 1, 19 and 20 says this takes the invisible things to understand the, uh, take the natural things to understand the invisible things. You see what I'm saying? So Yahweh had to just manifest, manifest or showed how the Yahweh Elohim then transmuted into this threefold intangible tabernacle, see, or this sanctuary. And then later, how that Moses had to build one like this in the wilderness of Sinai that he has saw here in this, uh, while he was here in this mountain. See, so you couldn't understand Elohim here, see, that he's the Father, he's the Word, and he's the Holy Spirit, see, all embodied in one, see. We couldn't understand the Yahweh and pure spirit had to take on a shape and form and an Elohistic, see, in corporeal form, and then manifest himself in the flesh, see, but that these three are one. See, when I was talking about Lord God and Jesus Christ, I didn't know how that these three are one. And then he tells us, see, through by our physical body, see, you have a foot, you have a calf, or, or a calf, see, and you have a thigh, see, that this is one leg or a hand and a lower arm and an upper arm, and this is one arm, a head, a chest, 
and an abdominal. That's one body showing forth the Father and the Word and the Holy Spirit. See, could not understand this until coming until this gospel. And Yahweh show, showed me and is showing us how all of this was just purpose within himself. It was all con con just wrapped up in him. Do you understand? We didn't know this. I didn't know it, see, that this tabernacle, see, pattern was a tabernacle, see, of heavenly things. And in it, it was showing forth the working, see, and just as you know, as you see over here in this bigger picture of this tabernacle, see, right here you have on this gate, see, you have this principle of a death that took place where they had to take that animal and slay it on this altar, see. That animal had to be washed here, see. You see what I'm saying? And this, this washing, see, I mean, is something was bloody water here, if you will, see. And that then the high priest, when he's officiating here, had to anoint himself, see, at the door, see, in this court roundabout. Now, before you can get right here, see, you had to go through this death, this burial, and this holy cup of, uh, cup of holy anointing oil, see, at this door. This is all within this court roundabout. You had to go through this, or that priest had to go through this, see, before you can get here in this holy place. Now, it's in this holy place where Yahweh said, mm. I apologize, my mouth is so dry, where he talked about over there, when you can see the abomination of desolation, I want that scripture over there, what did he say to do? Stand in the holy place. I don't know if anyone know where that at. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, see, now we are witnessing that, Right now, today, every day, lots of aspects of the abomination of desolation, see. Lots of aspects with that, see. When you look at what's going on in this world today, see, and the degradation that's happening, see, and how man is easier and ready to worship the creature rather than the creator, you see the abomination of desolation. When you see the restoration of the carnal ordinances, see, that Yahweh already fulfilled, you understand, nailed them to his cross, and when you continue to do these things, that Yahweh or the Yahshua Messiah, when he came in, remember, it's a purpose and plan. He came down, see, first man, Adam, see, just to be picked up by the second man, Adam. So when that second man, Adam, Yahshua, comes in, he's coming in fulfilling everything that had been written about him. In other words, he's taking over or completing or bringing to an end all of these carnal ordinances of circumcision from a physical standpoint, ceremonies, baptism, Passover, sacrifices, Ten Commandments. See, what are you talking about? See, there's no more baptism, not from, from a natural standpoint, not with water. See, he's done that. It was nailed to his cross, see. So when he, he went to the cross, this was nailed to his cross. When he resurrected, which he did, how did he resurrect? A quickening spirit, see. He was no more this flesh and blood. So if he resurrect quickly, if any of this is going to resurrect, guess what? It's going to be spiritual. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to be physical anymore. So likewise, you have a baptism, but it's not baptism with water. You tell some people that and some close friends that they cannot see it. All I want to do is dump, get myself dumped into some water. But he said, no, that is not going to do it. See, because we know from a natural standpoint, water don't clear nothing up. It does not clean. So we're not talking about physical water anymore. Well, we're talking about being washed by the word. See, that's a spiritual, through the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, you are washed clean. I don't know scriptures that well, but I know they're in the book. But I can't tell you where to pick them up at. But if you know where they're at, fine. That's wonderful. But we're talking about that true baptism. Someone pick that up over there with baptism, if you will, in the spirit. It is a baptism. But you've got to be immersed and cleaned up from a spiritual standpoint. Then you're no longer dealing with carnality like this, trying to do something to worship our creator. You see what I'm saying? There's those ceremonies, see, Passovers, which now they call 
Lord's Supper. You see what I'm saying? We're not talking about going gathering together to eat this way. What we're talking about, as it talks over there in Revelation, see, that he that coming to him said he would get it over there in Revelations. I think 21st, 3 and 20. There you go. Pick up with water baptism first, if you will. Mm Mm-hmm. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Mm-hmm. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. You hear that? Go ahead, read. Whether you be Jews or Gentiles. Start over again. Oh, sorry. For by one spirit mm-hmm. are we all baptized into one body. So you said that's a spiritual body of Yahshua Messiah. By one spirit, we're baptized in one thing. How many of us have been baptized more than one time? <laughs> You know, many of us. But he said there's only one baptism. What baptism is that? Does that depend on which lake you went to or which baptism pool? That's not what it's talking about. He's talking about one baptism. That was the Messiah. When the Messiah was out there being baptized by John the Baptist, see, that was baptism for us all. He finished it all. So who is satisfied with what Yahshua did? If he did it and said that it is finished, as he said at the end, you put up here at the end, but when he died up here on this cross, the Messiah said, it's finished. What's he talking about? All the works, the script, the scriptures that was written about him, he finished it by fulfilling it and completing it. He had to either complete it through word or through deed, but the Messiah had to do it in order for it to be completed, for it to be fulfilled, see, which means to finish. You see what I'm saying? So those, he, we're all baptized under that one baptism, not water anymore. You see what I'm saying? See, and then he talked about, like I said, the Lord's Supper. Let me have that over in Revelations. I want over there where, first of all, said this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, if you can get that for me, because the whole world thinks that's what you're supposed to do. You see what I'm saying? We just went through Easter and so forth. But there's people that are taking the so-called Lord's Supper, look, every single Sunday, first Sunday of the month or whatever the case is. You understand? See, made it the everlasting supper instead of the Lord's or the only supper. See, these are things we learned here. We may take it for granted, but the world does not know it. That's why what I say, if Joshua gives me the opportunity to talk to anybody, share this gospel with anybody, he just makes me do it in the most simplest form that he's given me to do. And that's all I got, and that's all I know. See, but that's what he gives me, the way I heard it when I sat on these seats here. You see what I'm saying? And he told me to just continue. Don't be ashamed of preaching this gospel. Paul came in. He said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel, for it's the power of salvation. So we can't be ashamed whether we have words that we think are good or not. See, don't close an ear to preaching, to hearing it or preaching it. Look, he has used every last one of us, not that it's anything to any of us, but he's given you the opportunity to know something. So guess what? There's a responsibility to preach it. Do not be ashamed to preach this gospel. Do not let this old boy take your mind where he will want to take you and tell you, shut up. Don't say anything. See, I'm worried about what somebody thinks, what I'm like if I say something. Don't worry about that. Trust in Yahshua to preach it. See, if he's given you anything, preach it and be satisfied with what he has given you. That's where I am today. See, because there's a lot of things happening in this world today. And we don't know when that eclipse took place. How many of you thought or questioned, how do we know whether Yahweh will take this thing on out of here? We're talking about, see, it's a manifestation of something that's real. You know what I'm saying? And we just take it for granted. Oh, well, this has happened many times before. Back in 19 so-and-so, this has happened. You see what I'm saying? But look at the principle of that. You're talking about that ethereal sun that's out there, see. We had a scripture read that we talked about in those days that the sun shall be darkened. It didn't say that it wasn't that something was going, going to go down behind the horizon. It said it was going to be darkened. See, and that's exactly what. Now, we know that that moon, see, is representing that law or carnality, if you would. I'm saying it in simple terms, okay? There's some people that can get up here and blow it to, out the box. But I'm saying it the way Yahweh made me understand it. And that old boy always wants to cover 
over the sun or block the sun. See, and then the scripture went on to say, see, least the light of the glorious evangel shall shine. Yahshua is going to shine. You understand? That old boy think that he's going to block it out. You see what I'm saying? And if you went out, I went outside and look, the sun, we're on this side of the world, so it wasn't a total eclipse. But when I went outside, see, and that sun, that moon started hiding, going over that sun or trying to hide out or block out the sun. And I'm sitting out there, and it was a, happened to be a nice day that day, sun shining and everything. And I'm standing there in front of my yard and all these people around, and the temperature, the wind, it just got just cool. Just, you know, it's blowing. The sky is a different color. It's weird looking. You know what I'm saying? That's the uh, simple effect that we saw of the sun being hidden. See, I'm telling you, let the light shine. You know, I was so glad to see it when it did come back to this sun up here. See, it's what we have life from. You understand? That is from a physical standpoint on this earth, and everything reacts to it, as they went on and showed later how the animals and everything reacted to that little few minutes of darkness that the sun, the elements are reacting up there, see? And see, when that sun's not there, see, we cannot exist without it. So he was showing me as I stood out there with all the other people saying to myself, thank you, Yashua, thank you. Just like this world can't exist without that ethereal sun, I can't exist without you. And neither can you exist without him. You see what I'm saying? We can't exist without, without Yahshua the Messiah in us. Whew. Where was I at? What did I have? Mm -hmm. um, you had 1 Corinthians 11 and 20 mm -hmm. gathered together in one okay. place. Do you want that? Mm -hmm. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. He said, supper. this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now, look, I'm saying, you know, my son has a visitor here, and I just wanted to share some of these things. But look, this is what was said to me. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. That was the only place that is found in that Bible, see, that where it says about the Lord's Supper, and that's when it tells you, don't eat it. So it's something to think about. What, what I mean, what is Reverend so-and-so, what they've been saying? See, we didn't understand that. See, but he's saying this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Read. Go ahead, read. For in eating, everyone mm -hmm. takes before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. You see? Mm -hmm. He said, for in eating... Everyone takes his own supper. In other words, you know how the Lord's Supper was. You walk up there in the line or either the priest comes down to you or minister or whatever, and he gives the bread and the wine to one person, and you give the bread and the wine to the other person. Well, before you get to this person over here, it says one is, one is hungry or one is waiting to be eaten, to, to eat, thank you, and another one is hungry. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, it's not talking about that from a physical standpoint. But in fact, it's talking about Yahshua Messiah, he is the true bread. Remember when they were out here in the wilderness of Sinai, see? When they came out there in the wilderness, see, Yahweh, they didn't have no food, right? And Yahweh had to rain down manna, see? You see what I'm saying? For them to eat. That was just a type, see, of him providing, see? And then Yahshua Messiah comes in and said, man, when he was being tempted of the adversary, said, man don't live by bread alone, but by not the physical bread, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. See, in other words, it's not about this physical bread. See, the people are about eating, see, but it's about the true bread, which is Yahshua Messiah. He said, I am the bread of life. So you want to eat of him or learn of him. Revelations, where it talks about, uh, behold, when you come to the door, knock. <laughs> like I said, I know the scriptures. I just don't know exactly where they're at. But go ahead, Revelation read. Revelation 3 and 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, this is Yahshua Messiah, or Yahweh himself, through Yahshua Messiah, standing at your door and knocking. Because he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Read. If any man hear my voice. Now, if you hear my voice. And open the door. And open the door. I will come into him. I will come into him. Now, what are you talking about? Hearing your voice. See, you hear that voice. Look. Have you ever heard of the name of Yahweh? Have you ever heard about this school that you go to? 
Have you ever, did you even know there was a true divine name? He's knocking at your door. You see what I'm saying? And if you're like, I don't know, hear that. I don't want no parts of that. See, then you didn't answer. But if you said, hmm, tell me more. Or maybe I'll go down there with you. What? Never heard that before. And you had the, that in your heart, the question where you're answering Yahweh. Look, it's Yahshua the Messiah that hears your heart. That's what he's saying to me. He's hearing your heart. You don't have to answer. You don't have to say a word. And Yahshua hears your heart. And that's why the bell has been rung. I'll conclude. I don't know. I feel like I did a lousy job up here. But I'm glad to have something to say. I'll conclude with saying this. When you know that Yahshua Messiah, look, when he has manifested something in your heart and in your mind, can't nobody take that from you. See, that's the strength we want to hold on to because none of us know how long we got in this flesh. You see what I'm saying? But if you know that Yahshua is talking to you or have said anything to you in your heart and to your mind, you answer that. You ask Yahshua and uh, love the prayer. So I don't know where is that. But he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. There you go. That's the only prayer I want to have in my heart because I don't know what the next day holds. But I know that Yahshua is with me no matter what. And I will say that to you, brethren. It is wonderful to be here. I'm not really a speaker. But I am truly a believer of this gospel, and I hold firm this profession. If he wants me to say anything, I'm a hold firm to that one, just as Paul did say. And I don't want to continue to rattle on, but I just love you, brother, and this has been a beautiful uh, experience thus far. Thank you. It's our Friday evening session. A total number of souls, 272. Our YouTube viewers, 110. For those interested, there will be a musical interlude next from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Our next class is tomorrow morning from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Let us all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah.